What's up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video on how I edit my YouTube videos, which was something that was much requested throughout the channel, but especially in my What's On My Mac episode where I told you, if you guys had hit 1,000 likes, I'll do this one. You guys absolutely crush it, and I think that video is at over 3,000 likes now. So how about for this video, the challenge will be if you guys can hit 1,000 likes, I'll do another video on how I make my thumbnails, and just what I do in Photoshop, how I color correct my photos for the thumbnails, and just the tips that I personally use. I've also kind of been joking about bleaching my hair, but everyone is telling me not to do it, and I'm kind of leaning towards not doing it, but if we can hit 5,000 likes on this video, I'll do it and you guys will be able to see it in a video in which I'll probably die back right after. So for those who don't know, the computer I'm currently using right now and have been editing since about November when it came out is the MacBook Pro 15 inch with touch bar. The specs of the model I'm using are on screen and up to now it's actually held up quite nicely and it's able to handle my 4K footage day in and day out pretty well. When I'm actually sitting down and editing, all four of these Thunderbolt 3 ports are taken up with adapters, whether it's my HDMI adapter, my charging port, my SD card slots, and also a USB port for my microphone. So aside from the battery life and its insane price point, that's definitely a huge disadvantage with this computer, but it's just the way it is and it's not going to change anytime soon. Even though this is a how I edit my videos, just a quick disclaimer, I want to tell you I'm by no means an expert. This is just what I use and a lot of you seem to be very curious about it. It, and I'm also not a teacher whatsoever, so I'm going to try to explain things the best I can and try not to bore you guys, but let's go ahead and get started. So first off, I use Final Cut Pro 10 to edit my videos, and prior to this, I came from iMovie, and before that, I just didn't edit my videos at all. But I've been using this for about five years now, at least, and I think I've gotten a pretty good hang of it and be able to do a number of things that you previously weren't able to. But as for any software, there's still a ton to learn, and I've wanted to switch to Premiere a few times, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And since I'm so familiar with Final Cut already, and I feel like I'm always busy, I just decided to stay with it because it seems to work. Of course, there's a number of customizations and things that you guys ask me what I use to edit my videos for, and I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I have found, but also some of the plugins I have installed on this computer that let me do certain things that you would normally only be able to do in Premiere or After Effects. Also in this video, I'm not going to be going through the basics of how to video edit because I'm simply not the best teacher, but when it comes to video editing and learning any software, the best suggestion I have is to watch online tutorials, but also just to jump in and get used to it in your workflow. One place you could do that is through Skillshare, which is an online learning community for creators with more than 15,000 classes in design, photo, video, and more. Everyone can take a class, try a project, or even teach a class themselves. If you're someone who's looking to not only get into Premiere or Final Cut video editing and needs something to just give you that kickstart, but also the video field and how to perfect your video skills, Skillshare is definitely something I could recommend for you. The premium membership begins at around $10 a month for unlimited access to learning, and you can get a two month free trial by clicking the link in the description section below. And I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. But to get started here, I'm going to try my very best not to ramble because there's a lot when it comes to video editing and I tend to take about five to six hours to edit an average video. There's just a whole bunch of little details that I like to pay attention to, but I'm just going to keep it down to the major things that I get asked about the most. So after I've dropped my audio in, synced it, and cut my A-roll, which is the main clip where I'm talking and just cut out all of the million errors that I can make, as you can see here, the first thing I like to do is just lay out the B-roll exactly where I would like it in the video, and I kind of just like to rank it based on what I'm talking about, but also the best clips I have. So in this case, I have a short little montage in the beginning of clips that I think embody the computer I'm talking about the best. So the first thing I like to do is just go through every single clip and make sure that it is properly leveled. I know not everyone does this, but it personally bugs me when I see a clip that isn't straight, so I try to do this with everything. Even though I try to level my tripod when I'm filming, occasionally the clip just might not be straight, so I use something from my Final Cut Pro FX, which is often on sale, and they have a whole bunch of plugins that are very basic, so you've got a leveler guide. And although you can just use a default rotation that is built into Final Cut, something that I don't like about it is that it doesn't ensure that the entire frame of the window is filled. So you might notice some errors if you don't do it carefully. So I'm just gonna drag the leveler guide onto this clip. And as you can see over here, it just gives me a window where I can level my clips, but I can also have a ruler to kind of reference where the line of horizon is. So in this case, the clip was relatively straight to start with, but just a small tweak there fixes everything and it just ensures that no matter what you're rotating it to, it fills up the entire frame. So 
You can see I rotate it this way and it stretches it appropriately to make sure that there isn't any white or black space on the edges. Before I talk anything about the boring color correction stuff that I do though, I'm going to go right into what you guys probably came here for, which is how I do my animations in Final Cut. So there's a number of types of animations that I do, but here's an example of one that I did in a recent video where I keyframed, but also use a technique that I'm not sure if everyone knows, but it's very simple. So as you can see here, the LG G6 text comes from behind the phone as it is panning across and also flashes a few times. And what I do to achieve this is I layer two clips on top of each other and I mask out the shape of the device. So for the most part, it's going to be easier with items that are boxy on the side or ones that you're willing to mask out. So I'm just going to reset this clip here and show you guys how to do it again. So what I do is either use the masking tool and just scale, select the area around the phone right here. And in this case, I only have to select the sides because the effect doesn't come out from any other part of the phone. And for rounded items, this might take a little bit longer, but here I'm just going to mask out the area around the phone, which is where I want the LG G6 text to kind of show up from behind. Now that the phone is masked out by itself, you're able to place objects behind that in which I put the logo for the LG G6 in between the two layers. That way the masked out area is above the original clip. In order to achieve the movement aspect where the text is moving across, what I do is go into show video animation from right clicking on the LG G6 logo and a keyframe. So you do have keyframes in Final Cut Pro 10, and what I do is first scale the text appropriately to the way I like it. And as you can see here, it was just a really rough mask. So it definitely could have been done better, but where we want the text to start out is behind the phone. So from there, I set a keyframe as to where I want it to start and where I want it to end. So at this point in the clip, I want the text to be right here to fill up that empty space there. So just removing it over there at this point of the timeline, it adds a keyframe right there and let's just play it over. And as you can see, the text pops out like that. And if you want to move faster, you just have to move the final keyframe point closer to the original point. And what I did after that is combine everything into a compound clip. That way I can add the keyframe of the movement from left to right of the entire clip, including the motion track text. So this is what the final result looks like. Another example of how I use this effect, as you might've seen, is with motion graphics. So a ton of plugins you might see along the left side of my screen here are from Motion VFX, and I probably spent like $500 on their website now. And there's two packs in particular that have motion graphics that I use the most. So there's something called MZAP, which just have these small little movements. They're pretty crazy, but some of them look pretty good, and it just depends on which clip is most appropriate for each one. But MForm is definitely one of my favorites and has some of the coolest effects from what I use it for. Occasionally you might see I have one of these in the background where it's placed behind an item, and in an example like here, all we have to do is drag the animation behind this and scale it appropriately to fit in with the frame. So let's just put that in between the two clips again behind our masking. And as you can see here, it looks like the M form is behind the phone, which is a pretty cool effect in my opinion. And you have a whole bunch of options with the pack that I purchased, for example, called M form. I'm gonna leave a link to this site as well in the description section below because I get asked about it all the time and it does cost quite a bit of money, but if you use it a lot, then it could come in handy. The next thing that I get asked a ton about is how I do my motion track text. And I know a lot of other YouTubers use this as well. And that is using something called M callouts, which comes from the same company that makes all of these M effects that are on my sidebar. What M callouts does is that it is able to automatically motion track, which makes the process very easy. It is ideal for clips that have like movement, for example. So in this case, I'm going to drag it over this clip and it uses a motion tracking engine called Mocha in order to achieve this effect, but they put it together in an interface that is very customizable and easy to use. So just looking at the effect here and figuring out how I want it to be formatted, I can just have it dragged like this. I'm just gonna do this pretty randomly. Um, normally you wanna find a location that has quite a bit of contrast or a pattern. That way it's easier for it to track and you'll most likely get a more accurate result. Just gonna add some custom text here and the fun part is now the tracking part. So. What we're gonna do is go to the first frame of the clip and make sure you drag this throughout the entire area where you want it to track. So I want the tracking to start right here and I want to have the effect right there. And I think that's just about where it needs to track in order to get a good motion tracking result. So now we just have to click track and it's going to go ahead and process. And in a couple minutes, depending on the power of your computer, it should be done. 
And there you have it. So as you can see, all I really had to do was drag the tracking point to an area where it made it easy for the program to track, click on the button and it was able to do its job. And from there you have some customization options in terms of changing the scale of it, modifying the text, playing around with the colors. And this just adds like a professional aspect to the video. And although I would have liked to see more flexibility in terms of what you're able to do with the effects, mcall it still works as a great alternative to those who want motion track text in Final Cut. So that covers the two things that I get asked about the most when it comes to how I edit in Final Cut Pro 10, the motion tracking and also how I just do the animations and have it behind the item. When it comes to transitions and stuff, I used to use one for every single clip and I pretty much stopped using them altogether because I don't exactly think that they're necessary. There are still parts of the video that I feel like it does add value, but for the most part, I just have my clips playing one after another. But in the event that I do use transitions, I use ones that are built into Final Cut, such as Cross Dissolve. I also use Swipe and Push quite a bit, especially when I show a screenshot or a stats page. And below that, I also have some more that I purchased from Motion VFX as well that have some small special animations that are just more exciting than the default ones. But I don't really find myself using that many of them because they're a little bit too crazy for my liking, but occasionally I might pick one out of here. Lately, the one that I've been using the most is probably the M Zoom, which you might have seen in many filmmakers' videos. I think it just has a nice smooth effect to it, and I use that in the first clip of this video. Lately, another effect that I've been trying to integrate in is called the M Infographics, and as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of the stuff from Motion VFX. They're not paying me to make this video or anything. I actually spent a lot of money buying them by myself, but they also provided me with a couple, so that was pretty awesome of them. And as you can see here, I was talking about the screen to body ratio of this phone, and it was appropriate to just have a slider bar that shows up in the screen. And the way I did this was, originally this clip didn't have any movement. I didn't pan or anything using my tripod, so I was able to just put the effect right on top of the screen and scale it appropriately, in which I turned it into a compound clip. And what that does is combine the two clips together. That way, they're a new uniform clip. By doing that, I'm able to add movement to a clip through the show video animation and set a beginning and end position using the keyframes just by setting the position and rotation and scale that I would like it to be, which would vary for every clip. So that is how I achieved my movements for some of the clips where I wanted to add an effect, but it did not have motion tracking within. So instead, I might have just recorded a wider shot and keyframed the movement in post. As I am recording in 4K, so there is a bit of flexibility there with minimal quality loss. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to video editing and what I do is color correction, which I consider myself very bad at. I really don't know much about it at all, so the stuff I do is very basic. I don't grade my footage for the most part. Um, most of it is just done within the camera and some small modifications in Final Cut. So within here, there are a number of things that I can use. What's very important to me is the white balance, so I try to set that in the camera, but in the event that it is off, I use the white balance plugin too from my Final Cut Pro effects, which we showed earlier. I drop that into the clip and it gives you a whole bunch of options when it comes to saturation, gamma, um, the shadows, midtones, and highlights, but I don't use any of that. And in fact, I only use one or two things on it, which is the white balance selector, which works well in certain situations. But in the event that it doesn't, then the temperature slider is probably your best bet. And you're just gonna to have to use your judgment as to whether or not the clip needs a cooler or a warmer tone. In this case, I think the clip is pretty good, so it doesn't need much modification. When it comes to changing the actual colors and exposure though, I just use the built-in settings within Final Cut Pro 10 for the most part, which has a color board, saturation, and exposure. I mainly spend my time in the saturation and exposure tab, which are divided into highlights, shadows, midtones, and global. So global controls everything, but shadows lets you just play around with the shadows, and as you can see here, the shadows are the darker areas of the clip, the midtones are in between, and the highlights would be like the white portion of this video. And when it comes to color, I tend to tweak the saturation, whether the reds, greens, or blues need a bump, but I like to go for a minimalist tone, and especially with this video, with the items being silver and white for the most part, I think a flatter look would kind of just add to the overall aesthetic of the clip. I think one of the weakest portions of my videos is the A-roll where I'm sitting in front of the camera. I just don't think the clips look that good. So I'm looking to upgrade my camera setup sometime soon, but also improve on lighting and the editing of the clips. In most situations, the standard built-in settings are more than enough when it comes to just tweaking your saturation, your color, and your exposure. But for clips like these, I like to use something called Color Finale, which other YouTubers who use Final Cut have as well. 
Color Finale costs about $100, which is kind of steep, but if you use it a lot, then once again, it's going to be useful. From here, you're given a color board, and I believe the one on Premiere that is very similar and built in is called the Lumetri Editor. You're able to adjust your lift, gamma, and gain through the wheels down to like the specific numbers. I'm still trying to get very used to this. And in addition to that, you also have options to tweak your levels such as the master, red, green, and blue. And last but not least, what I use the most is just the individual color selectors that let you tweak the hue, saturation, and luminosity of a clip. So I believe in this one, I was trying to tweak the skin tones, but also the color of my hoodie. And this is just a look at the before and after of how that turned out. And I think I did a decent job, but I could definitely get better at this. And as for anything, when it comes to video editing or editing in general, you just have to practice and kind of perfect your craft over the years. Otherwise, I really hope I didn't bore you guys because the way I video edit is pretty dry and it's a very repetitive process that takes me like an entire day at a time when it comes to uploading a video. It definitely stresses me out, but I wanna make each video look as good as possible. And the best advice I have for starting video editors out there is to try and learn new things as you go on with your work. Because a lot of times you might just have so many videos to edit, you might start getting very overwhelmed with yourself, especially if you have one job or one video to do after another, and you tend to forget to learn new techniques that help you improve your workflow to make it faster, but also to get better at video editing in general. That is definitely something that I disregarded for multiple years, and it wasn't until a few months ago where I learned a few new techniques as to how to take my videos to the next level. But let's just hop off this computer and close out this video. So there you have it, and I really hope I didn't bore you guys or confuse any of you because this video was actually much harder than I thought to make when it comes to trying to edit and demonstrate something while talking over it and trying to be cohesive and everything. So my original A-roll for this video was about 45 minutes long, but I tried my best just to blanket all of the things that I get asked about the most and what I feel would give you guys the best value considering you know the basics of your video editing platform already. If any of you have any questions about my workflow or just some basic things that you might need some help with, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to help you, but I can't guarantee it. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.